Hi, my name is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. And in this video, I wanted to talk about tactile bass. So, um, you know, I think one of the things that people look for in putting together their home theaters is they really want to have a visceral side to this. So, of course, you've got the visual side, being able to see the image, and you've got screens like this that are really large that give you this, you know, cinema-like experience. There's the sound from the standpoint of envelopment, right? Like the sound is enveloping, it's surrounding you, you feel like you're in the movie. But then there's another side, a tactile side, which is that when there's big explosions or big heavy diesel trucks or tanks or jets or rockets or whatever, you in real life, you'd feel that. And in the uh, commercial cinemas, you feel it as well often because they, they have pretty good kind of visceral aspects to it. In home theaters, it's a little bit more of a mixed bag for a bunch of reasons. So one I've mentioned quite a bit, because as many of you know, I like my output. And a lot of home theater systems really don't have the adequate output to really compete with what you get in a commercial uh, cinema. And the bass is actually one of the things that's often way short. Now, that's not always true. There's, we jokingly refer to these sometimes as like the AVS forum theaters, but there are people who put together their theaters where it's the opposite. <laughs> they have way, way more bass dynamic range than they do speaker dynamic range. And in, and in fact, from like a reference level standpoint, their bass probably exceeds reference levels and their main speakers are probably well short. Um, that's not an uncommon theater design. There's also, of course, those which are just plain, again, these are AVS form type theaters too. Over the top, everything has way more dynamic range than it needs. And that's, there's nothing wrong with excess kind of a thing, right? But the visceral side of things isn't just about excess. It's not just about output. And so in this video, what I wanted to talk about was what does it really take to feel bass? So um, in order to feel the bass, a lot of people probably think of it as like air motion, like the air it needs to kick you in the back, like physically the air needs to move. That isn't really what's necessary. The ground needs to move. So basically what you're sitting on needs to move. And, for, and, and, and that's what causes you to feel it. You don't, there really is an air, is not very dense. And the compression and refract, refraction of a pressure wave in a room from a subwoofer isn't enough to really feel it. And if you get to the level where you can, that's significant and potentially dangerous. Um, I mean, that is one of the concerns with base levels that get way, way too high. Most of these systems we're talking about wouldn't be even close to that. But if they did get to that level, and there are crazy, like, car audio competition systems or ones that are used just for showing off, where that is the case, the compression and rarefaction of the wave can actually cause issues with the air in your lungs and in your body, and that's where things can get to be dangerous. Not my concern here, not what we're talking about, but in terms of feeling it, it's really the ground motion. So in most home theaters, you've got one of two problems going on, and they're both the same core issue, and that is either you're on a concrete slab and then you're trying to move a concrete slab, and that's very difficult to do because the concrete is extremely massive. So there's a physics concept that's gonna come in here, and I'll mention the other one before I get into the physics concept. The other one is a rigid floor. So you are on a second floor, you're actually gonna get much more tactile effect on a second floor than you would be on a first floor, assuming the first floor is not a wooden floor, but actually a concrete slab floor. Um, or basement theaters, they're like the worst because the whole thing's underground and you're trying to move all that. And so you don't get a real tactile effect with those types of systems all that well. So I, as I said, being on a second floor or on a wood floor that's not actually on concrete but kind of sprung on its own, such as being on trusses, they tend to give you more base. And there's a reason for that. And this, this is the physics concept. And that is momentum. So many people think of momentum as the idea that an object that's in motion will stay in motion until something slows it down, right? Like air or, or other forms of resistance, ground resistance. But momentum from a physics standpoint is really the idea of what it takes to get an object moving in the first place. So it's the amount of energy you need to do that. <clears throat> and mass is a part of that equation. Um, so when you take a wooden floor and you tie it to the rest of the house, the mass you're trying to move is not just the trusses and the plywood, but also because it's now been connected, it's the added mass that the resistance of the whole rest of the house's structure and rigidity causes. And because it 
it actually does flex a little bit, you do have the ability to move that, but the subwoofers aren't gonna move the whole house. So that's why a floor on trusses gives you a much more tactile effect than you would get than a concrete floor because there is that movement, but it's still not as good as it could be. And then on the concrete floor, of course, you've got the problem of it's the whole mass of the concrete floor rigidly coupled to the earth itself. Subwoofers are just not gonna move that. And so you just don't get much of a tactile effect from that. Again, you actually can cause concrete to wobble a little bit. And that little bit of motion can transfer through to your chairs and you can feel it. But one of the reasons why people like to do near field subs is that if you get them right up against the chairs or very close to it, you can vibrate the chair. Which brings me to the real fix. The real fix, which I did in my home theater, but not for this reason, and I have to be honest with you, I didn't expect what I got. I had, I had not done a sprung floor like this before. Um, I had done sprung floors in theaters before using a different product that was much more rigid. And while it still provided decoupling, it didn't provide this kind of decoupling. And so while it did have a good tactile effect, it wasn't this. The other thing is I have a lot of bass in this room right now, even though it's not even the full setup. In the system that I had done before, there wasn't anywhere near as much bass. <clears throat> I think that system had 412s. This system has 412s, but they're coupled together, so there's two 212 modules working. Um, this is also a higher output sub than that was. Anyway, um, so to the point, because it's a sprung floor and it's a very compliant floor, because remember I used the hush frame decouplers, which uses a silicone kind of spring decoupling piece between the wooden plates. That, that silicone spring is really squishy and there's enough of them on the floor that they don't compress. So when I do this, the camera's probably shaking from this, but the whole floor shakes. It almost, it's actually like a surreal feel. It almost feels like you're on some sort of like a gym floor or something, the way it, it does that. That's what's keeping sound from transmitting from my room to the room below. That's the real reason why I did it. But it had the side benefit of the subwoofers, which are not sitting on this floor. They are themselves completely decoupled from this floor those subwoofers are shaking this floor so immensely that I actually did a demo the other day. And when the guys came over for the demo, one of them was like totally into this and he loved the tactile effect. The other one told me to turn the bass shakers down. And I told him, there's no bass shakers in this room. He goes, there's gotta be. I've never had bass shake like this. And I said, no, I'm telling you, there's no bass shakers. What's going on was a lot of high displacement subwoofers mixed with a sprung floor, just shaking everything like crazy. And so, as I said, the tactile side of this, the visceral side of this is a part of the experience. It's part of what gets us into it. It's really hard to achieve it in a typical room. And so the thing you wanna do is get the platform that you're sitting on, whether it's the whole floor in this case, or a riser, to be sprung, basically, to be decoupled from everything else with a very compliant spring system. And there's a lot of ways that can be done. The hush frame product is actually a relatively inexpensive way to do it. It's very effective. Um, I think that folks might want to consider if you're going to build. So one of the things you could do is if you say, well, I can't put a sprung floor in my house. That's just not going to happen. You can build a kind of low riser. It doesn't even need to be like a six inch riser if you don't actually need the riser. It could be a two inch riser. Just something that's going to sit on top of your existing floor. And then instead of having rubber feet, because those are not going to be compliant enough, what you would do is you would actually have, you would build it such that you could put those hush frames on the bottom. And then you could put rubber feet on the hush frame itself to give it something to sit on the floor. And you would put these the same way you would if you were doing the floor itself with the hush frames in terms of the quantity, because you do need to make sure that there's enough of them that they don't compress from the weight of the chairs and people. A little compression, okay. If it completely compresses, you're going to lose all the effect. And then that would actually give you the same benefit. It's not going to give you any benefit for sound isolation, but it will give you the same benefit in terms of that visceral side of things, because then the chairs themselves are going to be able to bounce around. In fact, I don't know, I'd have to kind of think about how to do it, but you probably could just take the chairs and put sprung feet on the chairs, including you could probably use the hush frames that I use to do exactly that. Um, so that might be an option too, is just making the chairs kind of springy. Because the issue is you just need the chairs to be able to shake. As I said, my subwoofers are not sitting on the floor. They're actually sitting on, so the way that this whole thing was structured, the walls have their own decoupler on the main subfloor from the floor in the theater. And the floor in the theater actually stops before the two by four stud walls start. 
They're double stud walls. And then the subwoofers sit on the bottom plate of the double stud wall on top of hush frame decouplers. So the subwoofer is sitting on a plate that itself is decoupled, and then the subwoofer is decoupled. So there's so many layers of decoupling, and there's probably about an inch of travel at this point uh, between the subwoofer and this floor that it isn't directly transferring its energy to this floor because it's sitting on it. It's just the general energy transfer that's happening of having the subwoofers in the same room. And so that's why I'm saying, I'm pretty sure that if you just made a floor that floated, you'd probably get, like I said, like a, um, a riser type floor that floated, you'd probably get basically the same effect. And if it wasn't enough, heck, just stick some subwoofers on top of it. It's, there's nothing wrong with more subwoofers and you could always do, like, as I said, like a large riser area that the chairs sit on and then you could put your near field subs like you want to. But by getting that so that the chairs themselves are floating off your main floor, you no longer have, from a momentum standpoint, the need to actually energize the whole house or the whole floor. It's just that structure and chairs. You've reduced the mass dramatically, and it's much, much more easy to get it in motion. And so that's how you get that uh, visual, uh, visceral effect. So the point I'm really hoping to get across is not what I did, and not that y'all need to run out and run spring floors, but rather that because people are looking to do this, and what I see people do is spending more and more money on more and more subwoofers, really... Think of it from a physics standpoint. This is all about momentum. There's a finite amount of energy that you're able to put into the room. If you really calculated the amount of energy that, that adding more subwoofers is doing, you would realize that from a momentum standpoint, you're not gonna overcome the mass of the house very efficiently. You'd actually have to add a lot more subwoofers, which is why people sometimes do that, to get that visceral effect. The cheaper, easier solution is to reduce the mass. So of course you can't just like stick holes in your floor or anything like that to reduce the mass. But what you can do is create a, a subfloor, a secondary floor to your main floor that is of lower mass, that is physically isolated from the main floor, and that is what needs to get put into motion. And you can do that, as I said, by either creating a sprung floor like I did, which only works if you're at a construction phase and you're doing complete construction of the theater, or you could build something that would sit on top of your existing floor, a kind of low riser that itself is sprung. Um, I will try to put in some links to the products I recommend for this. The one that I've used specifically and recommend, of course, is the hush frame decoupler. It's designed for floors and walls and can be used in all sorts of ways. RBH actually started using it as part of the decoupling of their subwoofers after I developed a system for decoupling the RBH subwoofers I have in my walls using that. It's a very effective solution. It's not that expensive. I think you'll spend maybe $6 a piece for these. But if there is a reason why you need something else, there are certainly other products that could work, uh, work as well. There's also actually some tension damped spring isolators that have even more travel. And I would suspect that those would work very, very well and may be a good option uh, that you could try. Um, so uh, that's the video on visceral base. Uh, if anybody happens to live in the Sarasota area and is watching this and wants to experience this, feel free to reach out. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I've been doing demos with people. The theater's not even done yet. The acoustics aren't in. We're like not even close, but the system works and I, I can put on a demo at least. And because of that, I've been showing it off to folks and, and I've been a little bit nervous because like, I think it sounds pretty good. I like it. Um, when it's your own system, even if you have experience with lots of others, there's two things. One is you tend to be hypercritical of what's wrong with it. And the other is I think you tend to be blind to what's wrong with it. So on one hand, you may be picking apart little things here or there. And on the other, there may be like big issues that you're kind of like, ah, it's good enough. And so people come over and I'm like, well, you know, like Don Dunn was here the other day and he certainly heard a lot of systems and I didn't know what he was going to think. And he said it sounded good and then he left. And then I was talking to him this morning and he's like, it sounded really good. So I impressed Don and I had Donimus level bass. So that was good. Um, but uh, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to give a demo. Like I said, I'm most impressed with just how visceral the bass is. It was beyond what I expected. It's not anything like I've experienced before with other systems. And it's to a point now where I think that a signature of my designs would be always doing floating floors. I always spec them in sound isolated systems when I can, but it wasn't something that I ever thought of as having value outside of that. Conceptually, I knew it would improve the bass in terms of the tactile effects, the visceral side of things. But it just, it's, it's expensive and it's a lot of extra labor to do that. Um, I'm now kind of looking at it differently as saying, this is something people typically want in their theaters. 
and they would spend the money on more subwoofers to achieve it. And I'm achieving it instead of doing it with more subwoofers by just having the right number and type of subwoofers. And then, like I said, reducing the mass you need to shake basically by having this floated floor. I think it's a great thing. I think it really should be a standard part of theater designs. And, uh, and I encourage you to try out some, some tricks like this with your own systems. So hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully the little mini physics lesson was helpful in understanding how this works and why and what you're trying to achieve when you do this. And uh, subscribe to my channel so you can get more of this content. Thank you.